Stocks bouncing back after suffering their single worst trading day of the year on Wednesday. Our next guest says that while markets have been giving investors plenty of things to be worried about, the yield curve inversion may not be one of them. Joining us now is Jack Manley, global market strategist at JP Morgan Asset Management. So uh, I'm assuming that some people called up yesterday and said, hey, what's going on, right? A recession is right around the corner. When you see the yield curve invert, and we were discussing in the break, you know, Rick's like, hey, it inverted for five minutes. It's six o'clock in the morning. in the middle of the day. We didn't start there and we didn't end there. So, so what, kind of, what kind of signal are you taking away from I mean, that? I mean, there are a couple things to take away from that. Not, not only was the inversion extremely brief, but we have to remember that the ten-year was maybe a basis point higher than the two-year a couple days ago. It's maybe a basis point higher. Like right. that, that dip lower, I don't think was enormous. But I think the bigger picture here is that there are some things to be concerned about right now. I mean, we have uh, the effects of fiscal stimulus are fading. We're at a full employment economy. The demographics aren't great. Aren't great. Trade tensions are lingering. Business uncertainty is is fading a little bit. I don't think the yield curve inverting in and of itself is something that we necessarily have to be worried about. And I don't think that any of those things that I just mentioned necessarily mean that we are we are posed for a recession. I think they just sort of confirm what we've already started to see, which is a slowdown in growth. Well, and I think a lot of us are probably then having deja vu of like, this is the same story that I heard in 2012 when we we're going to have a recession. The same story I heard 2015 we we're going to have a recession. Mm -hmm. Is it just kind of like people don't want to accept that we have a slow growth economy I, I, and we have an aging demographic and like it it's hard for markets to make sense of that? I, I think that's that's definitely part of what it is. I think people have been calling for the end of this cycle since it started. I, you know, there there is so much anxiety out there right now, and I think so much of that has to do with the fact that what happened in 08 was so bad, was so historically bad, that people are absolutely terrified of the next recession when they don't really have to be, we don't think. I mean, it's almost like, could we just have this recession and get it over with? And then and then we'd be comfortable. We have a nice, you know, seven or eight or 10 year period to look forward to. Yeah, I, I, I've been sort of muttering to that to myself over the last <laughs> couple, couple of years even that, you know, I, I think there would be a great psychological impact from there, or at least there potentially could be where we get another recession sort of under our belts. We remember that not all recessions are 2008. Not all bear markets are the dot-com bubble bursting or, or the global financial crisis. That a recession is literally part of a business cycle. It's normal. Yeah. It happens. You know, I, I heard a radio program the other day interviewing some restaurant uh, restaurateurs on the West Coast saying, uh, nobody's opening restaurants anymore. What's going on? And somebody said, well, we haven't had a recession in more than 10 years. And they just keep pushing the rents up as if we need a recession to come along and sort of <laughs> push the rents down for a while and sort of it's almost like a, you know a forest burn you know well, we you need know, to clear out some of this brush and to that point you know Jack just thinking about the way your clients are, are situated right now do you feel like people are still overweight defensive sectors or sitting in cash when they really shouldn't be based on their age and their goals yeah. just because of what happened last time yeah I mean I think well I think those are two different things I think people are certainly overweight in cash at the moment especially given what it's yielding right now I don't think it's wrong to be a little bit cautious a little bit conservative right now and so maybe that allocation to defense Defensive stocks works. But I think more broadly speaking, and to your point, given the fact that we are all living a whole lot longer, that we are used to maintaining a certain standard of living, I think that going all bonds when you're, you know, 60, 65 may not just cut it anymore for the future. Taking a little bit of risk, I think, continues to make sense even in today's environment. Uh, is this still a dip buying environment? I'm not sure what's going on right now. I think that we kind of want to wait for the dust to settle. I think what is that, the dust? What dust are we waiting for? Well, it's, to it's it's the 10-2 yesterday. It's good news on trade a couple days ago. It's bad news on trade a week ago, and we see how much markets are moving in response to all of those things. There's a lot of jitteriness out there, mm -hmm. um, and I think that we need perhaps a little bit of a period of of tranquility in there. Not a whole lot of news coming out. Retail sales were good today. That's good news. Uh, and then I think once we do see things calm down a little bit, maybe that's when we can take advantage how of it. How much of a downturn would make you an eager buyer? Well, I'm a, I'm a long-term investor, so I'm an eager buyer at almost any uh -huh. point. I think that what we've seen right now, valuations at the moment are around 16.1 times, I think, yep. forward earnings. 25-year average is 16.2 times. Stocks are cheap. And I mean, we, we had a, yeah. we had a, we had a, that cheap environment at the beginning of this year. We saw what that happened. We rode that valuation tailwind up 20 something percent halfway through the year. I don't think we're going to get another half like that necessarily. But valuations do tell us a whole lot about the future. And I think the markets have sold off quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. And if you're willing to take on that, you know, a little bit of additional risk, perhaps a little bit more volatility, 
go for it. Well, and so then let's just kind of end on this point. You know, you're, you're dealing with clients who are invested for the long term. Yes. You're looking at a market uh, over a couple decades here. What are they asking about right now? What seems to be, and we all know there's anxiety in the air, yeah. but as far as you're seeing it, what are your clients most worried about? Yeah, right I now? mean, people, people are asking me about two things. They're asking about trade and they're asking about the Fed. And I think that's what clients everywhere are asking everybody right now. Um, you know, we think about sort of timing of, of trade tensions, when they will be resolved, how bad is it going to get? Well, frankly, I think it may get a little bit worse before it gets better. I still see a base case that we get a resolution as we move into the 2020 election season, but I don't think the news that we got on Tuesday is necessarily the start of a new normal. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about rates. Oh, I think the Fed's going to keep going a little bit low or maybe another 25 basis point cut or so. But I don't necessarily see the federal funds rate going down to 0% before we get a recession. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we have to remember that in 2020, an election season, the Fed is going to want to be as independent, yeah. as neutral as possible. And so from my perspective, them moving rates at all next yeah. year in one way or the other is, is a non-starter. And just ask real quickly, um, yeah. if there were some kind of trade resolution, I mean, this is the big geopolitical thing that is hanging over markets. You mentioned business confidence yes. when you first started talking. How much of an improvement would we see in business confidence and would it actually lead to more business spending, do you think? I think it, I think it very well could. I mean, we're seeing even, even in certain areas there are hiring freezes, we're seeing CapEx is slowing down as a result of confidence weakening. And I think what's important to remember here is that it's not the fact that we're in a trade war that is disrupting confidence. It's that nobody has any idea what the future is going to look like. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that uncertainty is so unpalatable, whether you're a business or a, a consumer, that, that waiting for things to calm down a little bit, getting clarity one way or the other, I think that's sort of the linchpin for that turnaround. All right, Jack Manley with JP Morgan Asset Management. Thanks so much for stopping by.